Africa is deemed to be a consumption-dependent continent, and research further proves that one in five, that's 20 percent of the, of the world's consumers, will live in Africa in the coming decade. Furthermore, the largest African economy, Nigeria, has a trade deficit of 7.37 trillion naira in 2020, with uh, total imports standing at 5.92 trillion naira in the fourth quarter of 2020, which was an increase of only about 10 percent compared to the third quarter of the same year. Imports accounted for 65 percent of total trade, while export accounted for a measly 35 percent, as revealed by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. These data are a pointer to the fact that Nigeria is mostly import dependent, which begs the question, how does the country make a transition from consumption to production? How does it leverage the array of raw materials and natural resources within its borders for increased production? To respond to these questions that are begging for answers, I'm joined by financial expert Oyeyinka Oyeka. Oyeyinka, you're welcome. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. All right, so Oyeyinka, given or rather, good afternoon rather, I've been corrected. Now, given Nigeria's abundant raw materials and natural resources, and um, what strategies can be implemented to maximize domestic production and reduce reliance on imports? All right. Uh First things first, I think um, the government has taken a very hard first step, which is to devalue the local currency. It's a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's a hard first step. Secondly, government needs to encourage um, a lot of exportation of our goods into the international space. Mind you, we run an open economy, so we have to compete in the international space. So areas of manufacturing, areas of services. And let me talk a little bit about services. Services in terms of technology, uh, we need to do a lot more um, software as a service, um, IT, business process management, and all those kind of things. A lot has to be done to drive um, a lot of exports as a service um, from the country. I mean, we have um, a very huge teaming youth population that can be taught a lot of tech skills for exports. Uh, thirdly, we need to also do a lot in our steel. And um, uh, I, I can also add that our mineral resources uh, could be also be emphasized by the government to ensure that uh, we have some form of, you know, tilting of the balance of trade. I must also add, you know, finally, that agriculture and the agricultural value chain has to be, uh, has to be focused on uh, for exports. I'll hold it at that. Back to you. Um, so you speak about uh, very many uh, places or uh, instances where Nigeria could improve. You talk about uh, agriculture, you talk about steel, minerals, and all of that. Um, you also touched on the point uh, where service could also be an export. Now you're referring to the, the people, uh, the, the population. But what policies can actually make this possible? What policies can help businesses make services from Nigeria a or an export commodity? Okay, uh, thank you for that question as well. Um, we have to look inward and um, not policy right now. I think the framework's already in place. We have um, bodies like the Standard of Organization of Nigeria. We have NAVDAC. Uh, we have a ministry that is focused on technology and youth economy as of this point in time. So um, we just need to strengthen all those um, MDAs uh, that is targeted towards um, export and ensure that we do a lot of sensitization also in-house, when I say in-house, in-country, to foster and deepen export outside the country. So we also have to look at um, areas of, um, um, of, of the export points, uh, our ports, um, NACO, um, it is like that. Back to you. Thank you. Okay, then. So let's talk about foreign investment. We're not doing well when it comes to actually uh, helping ourselves with the resources that we have and also transporting it across the country. However, we are still yet uh, faced with the issue of also attracting foreign investment. What can we do as a country, first for itself, to be able to make sure that these sectors are in place and also they look attractive to foreign investors? All right. Uh, three key areas we need to look at. First is security. Uh, we need to change the narrative of security outside the country, and uh, we need to do a lot more and be seen to be doing a lot in curbing security challenges in the country. Um, secondly, we need to look at power. Uh, I'm very glad that um, the power sector is now 
also on the you know concurrent lists um, by the government. So that means that subnationals can offer power infrastructure in their states. So a lot needs to be done at that point in time. Uh, state governments need to look at uh, manufacturing clusters at the major level, at the medium level, and at the micro level, and partner with GenCos to provide power for them. That would ordinarily attract a lot of um, foreign direct investors into the country. We also need to look at the areas of transportation. We have spoken up in issue about our rail network, but we also need to improve our road networks from um, the north to the south and vice versa. You know, and especially to the point of export across the country. Um, then we also need to, you know, loosening uh, the bureaucracies of running business in this country. Back to you. Thank you very much. Do we have any case studies or any models that we can actually take sample uh, from as Nigeria to perhaps maybe emulate whatever they did to transition from consumption to a production-based economy? <laughs> Thank you for that question. That's... That's a naughty question. I, not, I don't mean naughty, I mean naughty. Uh, uh, so there's, it, it could be a blend between the Chinese model and the Indian model. Of course, uh, we have to adapt and adopt. We don't have to take everything hook, line, and sinker. Sink, um, sinker. And uh, first is that we can't take everything 100% because it will be draconian. Like I said, also have an issue. Uh, we run an open economy. So what we could do is to moderate, you know, uh, import and export in the country, uh, look at areas where we could encourage local producers to export more out of the country. Like I said, also have an issue, uh, look at entities like uh, NEPC, look at entities like the NPA and NAPO and other entities that, you know, facilitate export in the country and, you know, un unbundle it uh, to look at ways to reduce um, bureaucracies in these sectors to encourage um, exportation. Now, we have to be competitive. I personally do not really support banning importation of some goods to encourage local production. I, I support encouraging the local production to be more competitive in the international space. So while people are importing things into the country, we are exporting you know, at a level that on a net scale, uh, we'll be doing better. Thank you. Much uh, like in Kauye. Thank you. We appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.